Hello, my name is Allison. I'm a student at the University of West Florida in the master's program doing a thesis track in biology. Um, I got into the thesis track because eventually I want to go on and do a PhD um, in a concentration that is a part of what I did as an undergraduate major in biology and plant science. Eventually, I'd like to be able to have my own research lab, training my own graduate students and undergraduate students in the biological sciences once I obtain my PhD and teach at the university level. As a graduate student in the biology programs with the thesis track concentration, you can generally expect to take some core um, classes that deal with experimental design um, that'll teach you statistics and ways to apply statistics to your experiments so that you design them appropriately. Um, some courses in professional development as well as a course in techniques that are specific. Um, these may vary from university to university, but they're all a good base since you're learning how to become an information and producer as a graduate student you're actually doing the experiments and the science that's reported in the literature. Um, from there the rest of your master's degree is going to be courses that cater towards your specific um, uh, field of study. For example, I'm in plant physiology and biochemistry, so I took advanced courses in molecular biology and biochemistry that applied to my field of research, where other students in the department that study ecology take more specific classes such as wetlands ecology and estuarine ecology. Um, and that's usually de um, dependent on what you and your major professor decide um, to take as far as your courses, um, all applying, of course, to your field of research. You also have other um, opportunities within your department and even sometimes within departments on your university to do a lot of interactive work. Um, for example, I myself do plant physiology and biochemistry, but I also work with other professors in environmental areas to do wetland plant taxonomy and identification. So you have a lot of opportunities to spread out, um, round out your interest in the sciences and field and make you a better candidate for the job uh, market as well as for a PhD school. So after your two or three years of coursework and uh, concentrated field studies or research in the lab, the culmination of your project and all of your efforts is going to be your master's thesis, which is a body of writing where you are reporting why you did what you did, why you were asking the questions about what you were doing, and what you found reporting your data, um, and then discussing your results and getting it prepared to um, introduce into the scientific community through journal articles and presentations at meetings. My thesis is looking at defense proteins that are produced by an invasive plant species. Um, I'm looking at different environmental and um, biotic and abiotic stressors that will cause these plants to become hypersensitive to different pathogens. So I'm interested in looking at how these proteins protect this plant and also tying it into a possibility for why this plant is invasive and when it's introduced into this country why all of a sudden it becomes invasive in an environment where normally it would be kept in check. One of my favorite parts uh, about um, being a biology major and especially a graduate student in the biological sciences is the flexibility that you have. Um, you're able to see many in environmental um, areas that you normally wouldn't. Um, you are able to do many things in the laboratory, in the field, you go on trips to Indonesia, there's kids that go to Costa Rica for some of these classes. So you really get to experience all the different flavors of life. I've always been a nerd personally, so I've always grown up being really interested in how things work and why, and especially like, you know, dissecting frogs and doing all that gross stuff. So I really get into it and I really enjoy it. And um, when I get out in the field and I get to see new and interesting plants and go down to the Everglades and sample in the middle of the alligator swamps. It's really, really fun to me to do. And then to understand that what I do with that information is actually helping a lot of those um, environments. It's really kind of rewarding. One of the most difficult things about the major is, especially when grad students get here at first, is they don't realize the time um, that you have to spend in order to do a lot of this work. And a lot of the professors, we all call them slave drivers, but they're really just trying to bring out the best in your project. So you're in here many hours, many weekends, many holidays, but it's the best two or three years that you'll spend of your life because you'll really be rewarded with your thesis at the end, with your name in a publication, and knowing that you've done something for the scientific community and that you've contributed. I have a lot of advice for incoming students for a master's program and a ton of things that I probably would have done a little bit differently before I came in, but I'm very glad that I made the decisions that I did because it made me who I am today. So 
With that in mind, when you're shopping around for a graduate program, make sure that you visit the university's webpage if you're interested in a certain area. Um, visit the university's webpage. Look at the biology department, look at the chemistry department, whatever department you're interested in. Look at the professors. They'll usually list their own home pages and list something called a CV, um, which is a, a basically a resume that has their body of work throughout their entire career listed. Read the titles of their papers and see if what they're researching and what they're doing is actually something that's aligned with what you're interested in doing. If you want to just get a degree, then you just plug ahead. You're going to be kind of miserable because you're going to end up working for this crazy guy that wants to extract DNA from E. coli and you want to go swim with the sharks. That's not a good fit and you're just not going to be very successful because your heart's not in it. So make sure that your heart's where the degree is because it is going to take a lot of time and you're going to have to want to do it at the end and really fight for it. Um, with that in mind too, once you find an instructor or professor that you're interested in studying under, or even just a general program but you're not sure of a specific instructor that you want to work with, contact them. Um, email them, say, hey, I'm looking to do a master's, I'm looking to do a PhD, what do you have available in research? I really liked your paper about this, I thought it was very interesting, and don't lie, like tell the truth if you're really truly interested in working with them, because they're going to be able to tell if you're just trying to get into a program, you don't really know what you want to do, or if you're really somebody that's going to get in there and do good work for them, because um, they have a lot riding on this as well as you do. Um, another bit of information is after you've done your shopping around, look at what the requirements are for that program. Look at the GRE scores, look at the GPA minimum, look at what they're taking as far as letters of recommendation. Um, the GRE, you're just going to have to study for that um, and just, you know, just take it, be calm when you go take it. And if you have to take it a second time, don't freak out about it. It's not the end of the world. A lot of people have to do it two times. Um, then whenever you look at your transcripts and your GRE, usually the instructors will tell you, you seem like a strong candidate, go ahead and apply. Um, for this specific program, we had to have a faculty sponsor that was willing to take us into their lab before we could even apply, but that varies, so make sure you look for that information too to see if you need a sponsor first or not. And volunteering or doing directed studies if they're offered by your undergraduate department is a great way to get in there and figure out whether or not you actually like doing lab work. A lot of students are in love with the idea of being a mad scientist and working in a lab like this, but then when they get in there and they actually see see what's involved, they don't really like it so much and they decide they want to go out in the field and do something in the field. So try to get in with volunteer, try to do directed studies if they're available, talk with the professors that you have that you're taking the classes with and then that'll give you a big leg up too because not only do you have a little bit of experience, you know what you want to do, but then you have a faculty member that can write a strong letter of recommendation for you. Letters of recommendation are going to go a long way for you too whenever you're applying. Um, other advice, other advice, when you do get to the university, make connections with your lab mates. Make connections with people in other labs. Um, once you get to the graduate level, it levels the playing field and everybody's going towards a common goal and going through the same miserable stuff. So forming strong bonds with your coworkers and trying to get through this together is going to help push and give you that final motivation when you're actually writing that thesis and having to turn it in and getting edits done and fighting with the university over how to format your thesis and all that fun stuff. So getting a good support system will be good once you do get into the program.